Hey, what's up? It's Jared with State of Tech. Today we're going to talk about how the iPad Pro is increasingly replacing my laptop. I'm going to give you five reasons why I think the iPad is a solid laptop replacement these days. Whether you have one already or you're thinking about upgrading to an iPad Pro or maybe you should go with a laptop, I think this video is going to be super useful for you. I find myself using my iPad Pro much more often these days because it's ultra portable in comparison to my laptop. The battery life is absolutely fantastic. This lasts a lot longer on a battery charge than my laptop typically does. It's LTE enabled, which means I've got a data connection all the time to it that actually isn't costing me any extra because my second line on my iPhone is Google Fi, and Google Fi allows you to add a data only SIM for free and you're only charged for the data. So I end up paying like maybe three or four dollars in data that I use per month on the iPad Pro, which is absolutely fantastic. It's slim, the Apple Pencil is great, and also file management is getting much better than ever before on the iPad. So let's dive into the five ways the iPad Pro beats a laptop and why I think it's a great option for you moving forward. Number one is in writing. When I tend to sit down and write out email responses or I'm writing a document or I'm writing an outline for videos like this, the writing experience is just great because it's distraction free. You've got an app opened up full screen. Apps are designed to be full screen on the iPad, even though of course you can do split screen and all that other stuff. The writing experience is just absolutely great and I do a lot of that these days and so the iPad is just a great option for that. Uh, full screen is nice. Like I said, most apps are designed for full screen, but you can go split screen. You can easily swipe between different apps with a magic keyboard. Just doing a three finger swipe between apps is super great. If I'm not using the keyboard, just swiping down at the bottom of the screen to get between apps is just great. I love the experience um, and the trackpad just makes it even better. Photo editing is an area that I just, I always go to the iPad Pro now. I never used to do this. I used to go to my laptop all the time for photo editing. But if I have to edit smaller batches of photos, like maybe 100 or 200 photos or less from some sort of a shoot that I did, I go to the iPad and I import them directly into Lightroom uh, instead of going to my computer and importing everything into Lightroom, which tends to be a little bit of a slower process at times. Uh, now with bigger batch amounts of photos, I do go to my laptop because it's easier to get through photos and apply batch processes and all that stuff using Lightroom Classic for my Mac than it is using Lightroom uh, CC for the iPad or even Lightroom CC for the Mac for that matter. It's not so much a limitation of the iPad as it is a limitation that I find in the software and one being more productive for different situations. I actually am putting out a video comparing Adobe Lightroom CC and Adobe Lightroom Classic or CC Classic and I'll, I'll share that over on my other channel, Gear and Light. So make sure to check out that channel. Link is down in the description below. The high quality display on the iPad is just great to see those beautiful details and the images, uh, just the touchscreen capability. Using the Apple Pencil for brushwork or even fine adjustments is absolutely great. Those are things that the iPad has to offer that a Mac doesn't. There's no touchscreen unless you invest in something like a Wacom tablet or a, a pad or one of their touch integrated displays, you're not gonna get that type of functionality. Research and browsing being the number third thing is so much better on an iPad for me because it's distraction free. When I have a bigger display and a lot more real estate to play with, it can be challenging because I'm by, by default, I want to multitask. I want to have other things opened. I want to be doing other things. But when I'm researching and browsing on the iPad, Using the trackpad to copy and paste and select things, that's great. That used to be horrible on the iPad, copy and paste. Now it's great because copy and paste works just like it does on a regular computer on your iPad. 
uh, as long as you're using a case with the trackpad, of course. Those are things that used to be a hindrance to using an iPad, now they're no longer. So copy and paste is a breeze. Swiping between web browser and notes app or utilizing split screen definitely makes the experience really nice, being able to adjust that split screen. So when you have your web browser and maybe a little sliver over on the side for note taking or even just swiping between those full screen apps, it's a very simple process. On a Mac, if I wanted to go full screen, I'm often having to swipe up, choose the app, and then swipe back down, or the, the process of multitasking seems to be a little bit slower. So on a Mac, I'm always side-by-side -side apps or having multiple windows visible at a time, which sometimes limits what you're able to see in at one time. Uh, on the iPad, full screen apps that are also now uh, being designed and with uh, split screening and multitasking in mind, the process is really nice, the experience is really nice, and so when it comes to researching something, whether it's for a video like this or whatnot, I'm typically doing it on my iPad. Number four is just focusing on tasks at hand. The iPad seems to be something that keeps me much more on task than my computer. There's too many options on my computer with its, uh, with more applications, with bigger display, with uh, desktop display, with my ultra wide being able to give me the ability to stack multiple windows and have everything laid out. It's just too easy for me to get distracted. When I need to focus, I grab my iPad and I focus because apps are full screen deep by default and designed to be that way. So when I want to be in an app, whether I am reading or researching or writing or consuming content or whatever it is, it's just very nice. Do not disturb mode is great. It's much easier to access. I mean, you can access it on your Mac, but I often forget that I left do not disturb mode on on my Mac and that leads to frustrations down the road as well. The iPad do not disturb mode, very easily integrated. And then of course, being able to schedule when do not disturb mode is on or off. Like all of those things that you can do in your phone are great on the iPad. You can do a lot of them on a Mac, but they're just trickier to find and they're trickier to adjust. On the iPad, they're all right there at your fingertips. It being ultra portable means that I can go and work where I feel most comfortable. With that extended battery life, I usually have a ton of battery life available, so I can go curl up on the couch and sit there and read content and make some notes or start to put an outline together for a video. I can take it off of its keyboard and hold it like a big phone, basically, and a nice screen right in front of me. There's just so much flexibility there when it comes to the iPad that staying focused is great. It means that if I'm at a coffee shop or somewhere, I don't have to worry about being near a power cord all the time for my laptop. I, I can position myself wherever, which is absolutely nice. The performance of the iPad is not affected uh, as to whether or not it's plugged into an outlet like it is on most typical laptops. Number five is consuming content. The high resolution display is nice. Everything is always beautiful, whether I'm looking at photos, watching YouTube videos, watching a show, or whatnot on the iPad. The experience is great. The quality is great. Immersive sound is nice, having those speakers that just tend to wrap around you somehow, however they design that. Those speakers just wrapping around you, giving you a great audio experience. And then of course, it's amazing with AirPods as well. I have my AirPods Pro, and when my wife and I want to watch something together, we've done this when we travel together, whether we're on an airplane, or in a hotel room, or even just in our bedroom wanting to watch a show before we go to bed. We don't have a TV in our room, so we'll utilize the iPad and we'll do AirPods uh, sound sharing. I don't remember what it's called, but she can put in her AirPods, I can put in mine. We could both be listening to the same thing without broadcasting noise all over the room, which is absolutely great. So in conclusion, the iPad is becoming a, a direct replacement for a laptop. Apple says it's not a computer, but it very much is a computer and it contends with most computers out there. The only time that I really need to use my MacBook Pro is for heavier lifting, such as editing bigger batches of photos and rendering and editing video. Of course, that's still a better process on a MacBook Pro than it is on an iPad, even an iPad Pro, although I'm sure things are changing as Apple moves forward with creating their own chips 
and uh, getting away from Intel and running kind of the same chips that they're running in the mobile platform, we're probably going to see software start to move over. I highly, highly anticipate the coming of hopefully Final Cut Pro for the iPad. That would change my workflow drastically. So the real winner though, I think, is the Magic Keyboard and Trackpad for the iPad Pro. Though it's not the most comfortable from certain angles, it's definitely the best trackpad and keyboard combination for the iPad. I think that when it comes to being loungy and laying on the couch or sitting on the couch and putting this on your lap, the traditional iPad keyboard is a little bit better of an experience, but the trackpad is just absolutely fantastic. Having a trackpad on an iPad, it changes the whole experience altogether iPad OS is fast and well optimized and with the new version coming out later in the fall that I've been beta testing it just improves the experience even better. I've been running the beta now for probably about a month or so and I absolutely love it. It's not yet a full laptop replacement but it has never been closer. If you don't need the power of a traditional laptop that they have these days, the iPad Pro is plenty for you. You could plug in an external monitor and have a larger display if you need it. It's definitely a lot more flexible of a device than it's ever been before. And to be completely honest with you, my laptop has become a desktop computer. So maybe the real question is, do you even need a laptop anymore? Can you get away with a desktop and an iPad? And I think that is a real question to look at because desktop computers are still a lot more powerful than laptop computers, but the iPad is becoming just as powerful and useful as a laptop. So let me know what you think down in the comment section below. What would keep you from making an iPad Pro become your laptop of choice? Is there something that you do for work or leisure or whatnot that would keep you using a MacBook Pro or some other form of a laptop over an iPad? Let's talk about it down below. Links to the items that I shared in this video are in the description below, so make sure to check those out. Clicking on those links helps support the channel, helps keeps my lights on here in the studio. But that's gonna do it for today. Make sure to subscribe to the channel, give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, and we'll see you back in the next one. Take care.